ministry. To those of you who have joined our live stream, we are grateful that you logged on with us today. God has a special word that speaks to your need. If this is your first time connecting with us, we offer you a very special welcome. If you would like to converse with us, we will relish the opportunity to speak with you. Please provide us with your contact information via the email that is posted on the screen. If you are present in the sanctuary, we will have a connect team standing by in the overflow area to my right. And now we are prepared to hear a life-changing message from my very own pastor, Bishop Gregory Wells Sr. Please stand in the sanctuary as I present to you the man of God, Bishop Gregory Wells Sr. Put your hands together for him as he comes. God bless you and thank you, thank you. Would you join me in prayer? Righteous and eternal God, our Father, unto thee, O God, shall all flesh come. What a privilege, what an honor, what a blessing it is to be able to come to your divine presence, to call upon your name and know that you hear us when we call. Dear God, we are so blessed today. Father, we are blessed, O oh God, to be able to have this privilege of worship. We are blessed in the fellowship. We are blessed, O oh God, in our bodies, our minds today. But most of all, we are blessed in this great salvation wherein we now stand. Now, Lord, have your way in the midst of us. Do as only you are able to do. Touch, heal, strengthen, and deliver. Father, you know the way that we take. And when we have been tried, you promise to bring us forth, even as pure gold. Bless us now. Let the words of our mouths and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, our strength, our Redeemer, my God, bless and comfort those who are grieving today, Lord. Praying especially for Pastor Lance Phelps and Elder Deacon the same, Lord, both of whom lost their fathers recently. And asking you to move in mighty ways in their behalf. Strengthen them, Lord. Send them a word of peace. Send them a word of comfort. Send them a word of consolation. Thou, O God, who art the God and Father of all comforts. Bless us now, O God, out of the volume of the book. Let your word find good ground in our hearts today. And we'll give you praise, we'll give you honor, we give you glory, and we give you thanks. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Matthew chapter 16 will suffice as our text today. We praise God and greet every one of you in the wonderful name of the Lord Jesus Christ. It is in him that we live and move, and in him we have our being. We are what we are by the grace of the Lord God himself. Amen. I want to read the text and allow you to take your seat, say a few things to you, and then we'll get to the message as God would have it to be today. Matthew chapter 16, verse number 13 through verse number 16. Very familiar text, I'm sure, that reads as follows. When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, Some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said unto them, But whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And all God's people shall say, Those of you that have your Bibles, raise them before the Lord and say, Lord, bless us through your word. God bless you and you may be seated. Before I take the, the subject at hand today, let me say and tell God a profound thank you for what we experienced in this house last week. Amen. amen. And when I say amen, 
when I say this house, I mean also what we enjoyed on Saturday morning at, at the uh, Women's Empowerment Breakfast and uh, just had an awesome time and great, great word and great fellowship. The presence of the Lord was palpable. You could just about taste him and feel him and know that God was in the midst of us. And uh, then Evangelist Bias preached us happy on Sunday morning. It's all about the fellowship. And then, as if that weren't enough, fifth jurisdiction came in Sunday night. The house was packed, but the Holy Ghost was ruling. Amen. And we had us a wonderful time in the Lord. The Lord blessed our preacher, uh, Pastor Tanya Brown, to speak to us in a very anointed and powerful way. Deliverance was in the house, and the move of God was certainly in evidence. I wanted to say to my church family how much I appreciate you, one, for having supported that service as your pastor is a jurisdictional bishop for the fifth jurisdiction. O'Fallon was very much in evidence. Amen. And I certainly appreciate the Lord for that. And uh, I appreciate God for your kind giving and in the offering that was directed to my benefit. I thank God for your, your helping me and blessing me in, in a financial way. And I certainly do appreciate the Lord for that. And also, by the way, thank you for those of you who bought my book last week. Thank you for that. Amen. So we've just been blessed, as uh, my, my brother, Bishop Oscar Houston, likes to say, blessed in the city, <laughs> blessed in the field. We're just blessed and blessed and blessed. And so we appreciate the Lord for all that you have done. Amen. Let me get to my, my mission at hand today, and I'm asking you to pray with me that the Lord will give clarity of speech and and uh, yes, I've been hearing him say to me about making this personal. This word has to be personal. So it's with that in mind from uh, verse number 15 particularly, where Jesus having asked his disciples, first he says, who do people say that I am? And they responded and gave the report, you know, what was out on the grapevine. Some say you're John the Baptist. Some say you're uh, Jeremiah. Some say you're Elijah. He said, but what I really want to know is who do you say I am? What's your report? And, and Peter, of course, in a typically Peter fashion, Peter said probably what everybody else was thinking. Thou art the Christ, the Messiah the son of the living God. And it's with that in mind today, I want to ask you the question, who is he? And what is he to you? And what is he to you? Yeah, it's personal now. Yes, yes, yes. It's not enough just to think about him in broad strokes and general terms, but now it's time to talk about what he is to you. Amen. So the Lord had been saying several things to me, and I want to just touch them very lightly, and I asked the Sunday school class if you would make note of them. And, and, and to my mind, they are like uh, streams that go along the same path. They may be distinct in a way, but they're all going in the same direction, and they're all kind of interrelated. And, and one of those streams ha that the Lord has been talking to us about, that is, and one of those streams has been recently, the Lord has been talking to us about discipleship and the importance of making disciples, number one, and relatedly, the importance of becoming disciples. Amen. And some of you who are in uh, the Bible classes recently on Thursday, you know we, that had been one of our homework assignments. We were talking about disciples and who they were and, and, and that they were disciples and then the 12 went on to become apostles and that there is a distinction. You got to be the disciple before you can be an apostle. And some people don't yet get that even now as we speak. But the Lord is speaking about the importance of making disciples. And you and I should be about the business of making disciples. Doesn't mean that you think more highly of yourselves than you ought to, 
but it means that you understand that God intends for you not only to witness to people, but that you bring them under wing and you begin to coach them and culture them and, and help guide them in their knowledge of who Jesus is and a relationship with him. So that Christ may be formed more perfectly, not only in you, but in them also. Amen. So that they start to mirror the life of Jesus and we just replicate like that. Follow me as I also follow Christ. So discipleship has been a very important theme that the Lord has been talking to us about. A related concept we've just been touching on recently was about liberty or love. That is to say, there are things that we are free to do, but we shouldn't do them if they cause somebody else to stumble. We never want to be a stumbling block. We never want to dispose ourselves to, to do whatever we feel we are entitled to do. Because all things are lawful, but not expedient. But we never want to be about, well, I'm free to do such and such, and I don't care how it bothers anybody. No, you are your brother's keeper. And you should never offend your brother to the extent that they fall away from the faith, following your example. Amen. So we never want to be a stumbling block. That, that was another theme, another concurrent stream that the Lord had been talking to us about. Then the Lord began to speak to my mind about the importance of maintaining the foundations of the faith. Because I believe the Lord is so soon to come. It is critically important that you and I don't move away from the, those elements, the foundational principles of the faith in pursuit of what seems to be popular today. Amen. So many who are call themselves Christians, they have modified their faith so as not to be offensive to other people in, in a general way or whatever, or, or to more or less to kind of blend in and to, to get along and to be accepted. God says, no, I don't want you to do that. I don't want you to compromise. He told us through Jude's writing that we must earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints so you and i have got to make a stand whether we believe god's word or not amen and don't let people and don't let pressure and don't let circumstances move us off of the fundamental issues of the faith have you not heard the lord reminding us of such fundamental things like the importance of the blood of jesus when we had heard so precious little preaching about the importance of the blood, but here recently the Lord has been reminding us that he bought us with the blood of the Lamb. Have you not heard about the importance of receiving the gift of the Holy Ghost evidence by speaking in other tongues as the Spirit of God giveth utterance? God is saying powerful things to us about the foundation. He's been talking to us about being baptized in water in the name of the Lord Jesus. And even though it may seem to be kind of unpopular and some people say divisive, God says, I don't want you to leave the fundamentals of the faith. I don't want you to leave that. And so the Lord had been talking to us about not compromising. But all, And then, then the Lord began to talk to us also about our relationship with each other, how we need to love one another, how we need to value one another, appreciate one another, and encourage one another. We did a whole series of Bible classes called the One Another Series. It's about the relationships in the body, how we're supposed to do with each other. Because he said now, how you get along with each other is an image of how you are with me. Because you cannot love the God whom you have not seen and hate the brother who you have. Amen. Doesn't work. Doesn't work. But at the end of the day, all of those things, as disparate and separate as they may seem, all come down to describing your relationship with Jesus. Who is he? And what is he to you? How do you see him? How do you see your relationship with him? And everything else turns on that. 
Amen. How you get along with the Lord Jesus Christ. And so there's a lot that we need to say about him today and can be said about him. Uh, among so many other things, uh, I began to consider the fact that there is an important branch of Bible theology called Christology. And if you look at it from a historical perspective, it is simply that view that caused so much confusion and, and disruption in the early church because people had differing views about who Jesus is. So some said, well, he was just a good prophet. He was just a great prophet, and he was a great man, but, but we don't consider him as being divine. Then there was another group that said, well, we consider him a, as, as being a, a demigod. He, he is a god, not the god, but a god. But then there's that group that says he is God, and he is God come in a body. He is God manifested in the flesh. And those views cause people to have so much separation. And I'm here to tell you today that that same issue exists today. People are confused about who Jesus is. But I'm hoping that you won't leave here today with that kind of confusion in your life. That you will understand that it is in him that we live and move and in him we have our being. If there's anything good that can be said about me, it's all because of him. It's not because of works of righteousness that I have done, but because of the Lord Jesus who loved me and gave himself for me. Ladies and gentlemen, that's critical. And so one of the things that Jesus did that I think that certainly should be said today is that he taught those folks back then in his earthly ministry. He taught them that he was the fulfillment of the Old Testament scriptures. Now, you and I sitting here today, we don't wrestle with the idea that he's the central figure of the New Testament. But what I need you to grasp is that the Old Testament was about him too. Even though he hadn't been born yet, even though there was no manger yet, and even though there was no being born in Bethlehem yet, still the looking forward was to him. From the Garden of Eden on, it was all about Jesus. It was about there's coming one who's going to free us. There's coming one who's going to liberate us from the bondage of sin. There's coming one who's going to take our place and die for us. And yet he's going to live forever. So Jesus said in John 5 and 39, he said these words. He said, search the scriptures, for in them ye think ye have eternal life. And you do. He said, and they are they which testify of me. When you read the Old Testament and you read all of the exploits of the patriarchs and, and of the kings and of the various witnesses, don't get confused. Yes, those things actually happened in history, but they were all pointing to the fact that he was coming. Jesus said in Luke 24 and 44, he said unto them, these are the words which I spake unto you. Then while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled, which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms. And then he says, concerning me. Oh, can you imagine that, that these prophets and these wise men of old, what they wrote, they had Jesus in mind. They had Jesus in view. They did not fully understand it. It wasn't made manifest until he pronounced it so. But he said, I didn't come to destroy the law. I came to fulfill the law. It's all about Jesus, and it's all about him. And so what we now understand is that he is the one that we were all, always, humankind was always looking forward to. I don't know if many of you saw it, but I just got a little clip, a glimpse of it yesterday about the coronation of King Charles III in England. And, and, and they was talking about how it was a little bit different from the last time they crowned a monarch, which was his mother, Elizabeth, in 1953. And, and they said how that at that time, uh, all of the ceremony was about uh, Christianity, and particularly from a white and European perspective. But now, yesterday, they had people of 
different religions coming up and giving homage to the new king. They had Buddhists coming up. They had somebody from the Sikh religion. They had Muslims coming up. They had Jews coming up as well as Christians. All of which to signify now that the empire has now embraced all of these other religions. Fine and okay from a human point of view. But don't get it twisted and don't get confused. There is only one Lord. My God, one sovereign, one king of kings and lord of lords, and his name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. And so when we look at that and consider that and understand he is the expected one, he is the anticipated one. I love it in Genesis 49 and 10 when the prophecy was given through, uh, I think that was uh, Joseph at the time. It said the scepter shall not depart from Judah nor the lawgiver from between his feet until Shiloh come and unto him shall the gathering of the people be. Now, he didn't perfectly understand it, but he was a man in a prophetic trance. He's speaking things that were really over his head. But God says, I'm giving you now the revelation that when he was talking about Shiloh, this is he. He was talking about Jesus. Jesus is Sh Shiloh meant peace. And Jesus is the prince of peace. He is the king of peace. Peace. It's all about Jesus. He tells us in Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 3, for the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the time it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come, and it will not come. So the writer in Hebrews 10 and 37 picked it up and said, For yet a little while, and he that shall come, he will come, and he will not tarry. He's telling you that the vision that Habakkuk saw was Jesus himself. It was not a thing, it was not a circumstance, but it was God stepped down into time my God taking on a robe of flesh and doing what no other power was able to do my God my God and so the Lord said to us, uh, all of this is what was foreseen in the Old Testament. And it was spoken to so that you would have a better understanding and a better grasp. And so when you read in Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful counselor the prince of peace the mighty god the everlasting father and of the increase of his government and peace there shall be no end upon the throne of david and upon his kingdom to order it to establish it with judgment and justice from henceforth even forevermore and the zeal of the lord shall perform this what he was trying to tell us is that the god that we are anticipating it is he who indeed has come. It is all about Jesus. It's all about him. It's all about him. And then finally, my brothers and sisters, please understand, my God, that even under pressure, Peter finally got it right. He said, for there is no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved than the name of Jesus. Uh, my God. So the Lord is telling us today, it's not about what other folks say. They may have their differing opinions. Some of the folks said this must be John the Baptist. Come back from the dead. Maybe it's Elijah because Elijah must come. Maybe it's even Jeremiah because Jeremiah was another great prophet. But Jesus said, all right, I've heard the report of those who don't know me. I've heard what other folks have had to say about me. They've not seen me no more than just having heard through the popular press. But what I really want to know is what you, the household of faith, has to say about him what do you say whom do you say that I am where am I 
to you. What is our relationship? Do you know me by name? Am I your father? Am I your God? Am I your leader? Am I your Lord? Am I your light? Am I your salvation? Am I the God in whom you trust? Is there a witness for Jesus in this sanctified house? That's what the Lord wants to know from us today. I understand, he says, what the world thinks about me and all of these differing opinions and how some of them will even have the audacity to try to argue you and me down and say we don't know anything. But somebody rose up and say, whether he be prophet or priest, I cannot tell. But whereas I was blind, now, now I see, my God, somebody, he's done something for me that nobody else could ever do in me. He changed me. He's the chain breaker. He's the habit breaker. He's the way maker. There's nobody like Jesus. Hallelujah. Nobody. Hey, hey, nobody. You can look high. You can look low. But there's nobody. Nobody like Jesus. Hallelujah. And so as I get ready to close this afternoon, can I stir up your pure mind is that he's been called by many names. He is the Alpha. He's the Omega. He's the beginning. He's the end. He's the first. He's the last. He is the Lamb of God. He's the Lion of the tribe of Judah. He's the only begotten Son of God. He's Mary's Son. Joseph's son, the son of man, the son of David, the son of Abraham, the son of God. He is the rose of Sharon. He is the bright and morning star. He's the shelter or the covert from the storm. He's the chief shepherd and bishop of our souls. He is the Adonai. He is our husbandman. He is indeed Shiloh. He is the bright and morning star. But you can call him by his name and that name is above every name the name is Jesus it's Jesus it's Jesus oh somebody give my praise today hallelujah 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 Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. The name of the Lord is a strong tower, and the righteous run into it, and they are safe. I'm safe in Jesus today. I'm not afraid what man shall do unto me, because I know, I know, I know in whom I have believed. And I am persuaded that he's able, he's able, he's able to keep me, he's able to guide me, he's able to provide for me. Oh, somebody praise him. Who is he? Who is he? Who is he? Who is he? And what is he to you? My God, my God, my God. He's my bread in the morning. My God, my water when I'm thirsty. Woo! He's just everything. He's everything. He's a mother. He's a father. And I won't take it back. My God, he's my shelter in the time of storm. And I won't take it back. Before I take it back, I'll add some more to it. My God, I'll tell the whole world. It's in him that I live. In him I move and in him I have my being. I'll tell the world I am what I am because of Jesus. It's personal. It's personal. It's personal. I don't know what he did 
particularly in delivering you. But I got a testimony. I can talk about that he's a habit breaker. I can talk about he's a mind regulator. I can talk about he's a heart fixer. Oh! I can talk about he's a heavy load bearer. I can talk about he's a heavy load sharer. I can tell the whole world, can't nobody, can't nobody, can't nobody do me. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. Can't nobody do me like the Lord. Glory be to God. What is he to you today? Hey, hey. My God, put clapping in my hand and running in my feet. Joy in my heart. Lift up my head. Wipe my weeping eyes. Bind up to my broken heart. That's the Jesus I'm talking about. Who is he? What is he to you? Folk are not looking for a historical Jesus. Folk are looking for a personal Jesus. A Jesus that'll step in the room. Come right where you are. A Jesus who knows your address and your phone number. A Jesus who knows how to reach you when can't nobody else touch you. My God, my God, my God. Who is he? What is he to you? What do you know about him? What do you know about him? The old saints used to sing a song and say, he's all right. Can I fix that just a little bit? He ain't just A-L right. He is A-double-L right. He is completely right. He is perfectly right. In him there is no variableness. No shadow of turning. He is altogether lovely. He's everything. He's just 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 he's just everything. So Jesus said, I know you've been out and about. And I heard know you've heard some things about me. And I know that there are a lot of people out there who say they know me. Hmm. The Lord said to me today, He said. There will be many who, to whom I will say, why call ye me Lord, Lord, and do not the things I say? If I am indeed your Lord, you should be obeying me. You should be following me. You should be serving me. I heard him say through Isaiah, I think it was, he said, how is it that the ass knows its master? And the ox knows its crib. But my people don't seem to know who I am. So he said, stir up their mind today. Cause them to think about where I found them. Interesting understanding because we like to say, I found Jesus and I'm glad. But Jesus wasn't lost. Jesus wasn't the one that needed finding. I was the one that was lost. And I am glad beyond the words that he found me. And you know what? Not only did he find me, but I'm glad he found me when he did. If he'd have waited much later, I probably wouldn't have made it. But he told me to talk to you recently about being rescued by the rapture. But he said, I had to rescue you from sin first. And rescued means I'm coming in at a nick of time. I'm coming in just before it's all over with. And when the enemy thought he had you, Isaiah said it like, like this. He said, when the enemy comes in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord 
raise up a standard again. Oh, God. It's like God come in the midst and plants his flag and said, no more. Enough. They're mine. And as I can almost hear the conversation. I can almost hear the devil saying, what, him? You got to be kidding me. As much junk as he's been into, he's mine. Back up off of him. Leave him alone. He's mine. I caused him to come into the world. And I have plans for his life. And the devil is scratching between his horns because he can't figure that out. What do you mean? But here I am today telling the story. Yeah, I know who he is. I know how to reach him. In fact, if you don't know how to reach him, let me help you reach him. I know how to get a prayer through. I know how to pull on his garment. I know how to call his name. My God. And know that he will hear when we cry. Who is he? What is he to you? What is, how do you know him? Well, I, mama told me something. I know mama prayed. That ain't good enough. I heard, I heard the senior saints at the church. I heard them praying. That ain't good enough. You got to know him for yourself. Y'all hear me today? You got to know him for yourself. And away with a form. Well, I belong to Old Fallon Apostolic. So? That ain't good enough. You got to know him. This place can crash and burn, but you got to know him. You got to know him for yourself. He ain't accepting membership cards at, at the pearly gate. Oh, well, you, you got the card. You can get in. Uh-uh. You got to know him for yourself. Who is he? What is he to you? He is the love of my life. He's the lifter of my head. He's the keeper of my soul. He's all that I need. And in the time of trouble, he shall guide me. My God, it's all about Jesus. Can you give God some praise in this house today? It's all about Jesus, friend. One of the churches in my jurisdiction just recently underwent the name change and and that's what they named their church. It's all about Jesus. And they wanted to be clearly understood that that's what their focus is. I think we could all hang a banner out and say that. It's all about Jesus. It ain't about who got the most money, who got the most members, and what we wear, and where we're going to eat after church. None of that matters. It's about him. It's about him. And so when you leave here today, I want you to leave here with a mind that says, I got to represent him. If, if, if there's any confusion with, with, between me, with me, as with John the Baptist, or somebody might think I'm like him, let it be in this fashion. I must decrease that he might increase. I want people to see less of me and more of him. I want Jesus to be the topic of conversation. I want to be able to bring him into it. I want to be able to point people's mind to who Jesus is. And if you're here today and you don't know him in the pardon of your sin, I want to introduce you to him. I want you to know Jesus for yourself. I want you to know that he's faithful and he's just. He's honest and honorable. I want you to know that whatever you commend unto him, he's able to take care of it and keep it until the moment of his return. That if you give him your heart, he will give you his home. You can make your home and your destination in heaven itself. Are you here? Are you here without the Lord on your side? Are you here? With that, that void, that emptiness, that longing, 
It says something's not what it ought to be. I'm, I'm just not as happy as I would like to be, as I know I could be. Something is missing in my life. Can I just suggest to you that much of our human effort is spent trying to place other things in a Christ-shaped void. In other words, there's a space in us that only Jesus will fulfill. And yet we seem to be bent on trying to put other things in Jesus' place. Can I tell you? It's all about Jesus. I don't always understand it. There are many times when I don't particularly care for or like what may be ordered of the Lord in my humanity. But I've been saved a while now and I've learned that whatsoever state I am in, therewith to be content. I've learned that if I trust him with all of my heart, all my mind, all my soul, he will lead me. He'll guide me into the furtherance of his will. Is that you today? Thank God for those of you coming for prayer. Are you here today in need of the Savior? The Savior. There is none other but Jesus. No other Savior but Jesus himself. No other deliverer but Jesus himself. He alone doeth wonders. He alone has all power. Are you here? Maybe you're already saved and you need the Lord to do something in your life. You need something special in your life from Jesus. If that's you, come. These prayers up here they are men and women of like passions just like you and I. But they believe in the power of prayer. They believe and know that this Jesus of whom we speak, he's capable and he's able to do exceeding and abundantly above anything that we can ask or even think. Are you here today? Are you here today? Are you here today? We're not going to stretch it out, but the Spirit of the Lord is calling today. The Spirit of the Lord is in this room right now. And God wants to do something for you today. You don't have to go back home the same way you came. You've been introduced. There's introduction that has been made to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. He's here for you today. Here and now. Here and now. Here and now. He's here for you right now. Right now. Right now he's here. He's here. He's here. Trust him. Trust him. Trust him, trust him, trust him, trust him today. And make it personal this time. Sometimes we come for somebody else. But the Lord says, I want you to come for you now. I want you to cast all your cares upon me. Knowing that I care about you. I care for you. I care for you. I care for you. I love you. If you were the only person on the planet, I still would have gone to Calvary just for you. Just for you. Thank you, Jesus. Praise, saints. Praise, saints. Praise, saints.
Lord, deliver right now. Deliver right now, Lord. Deliver right now, Lord. Touch, heal, and deliver. Make bare your holy arm in the midst of us today. Show yourself strong in behalf of those whose hearts are right toward you. We acknowledge you as the Lord our God. We acknowledge you as being our Savior, our Deliverer, the Lifter of our heads, and the Keeper of our souls. We praise you now. Can we just give God some praise all around this room? Come on, open your mouth and tell the Lord thank you. Tell the Lord thank you today. Tell the Lord, open your mouth and tell the Lord thank you. Tell the Lord thank you right now. Tell him thank you. Thank you. It might be tough, but tell him thank you anyhow. 